There have been some interesting compromises 343 has made on the performance of Halo Infinite on the last gen consoles, current gen consoles, and how PC is currently being underutilized. How much? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So after the 2020 reveal of Halo Infinite's campaign gameplay and being rather underwhelming visually, this is our first time to really get a chance to dive into the actual gameplay of Halo Infinite. And for the most part, it's been looking pretty good on the multiplayer side of things. So recently, Digital Foundry, the people who actually kind of exposed the visual graphics of Halo Infinite in 2020, talked about the visual graphics, obviously, in 2021. So the reason why I'm bringing this up in this video is because I want to break it down as a Halo fan and really show you the differences and how important those differences are for Halo's gameplay. Obviously, please go check out their video. It's like a 40 minute long video, but it's kind of like a podcast of how the performance of Halo Infinite worked on these multiple platforms. But if you want the TLD, are, well, you came to the right place. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So we do know that the new consoles are trying to really hard to hit that 60 frames 4K experience, but it seems like with Halo Infinite in this technical preview that Yes, you can hit that, but a lot of times you'll see that resolution actually dip within game. We had this previous experience with Halo 5 with the dynamic resolution that was brought in with the franchise in that iteration. Where essentially in high performance moments, the resolution will actually drop below the intended rate just to make sure to keep a smooth frame rate throughout the whole experience, which in my experience of playing Halo and just video games in general, that you want to prioritize frame rate more than resolution. I personally played Halo Infinite's technical preview at 1440p right around 60 frames and it was doing all right but for the series x doing 60 frames 4k it does a really great job actually playing halo infinite's tech preview though the differences come within the series s where if you wanted to play at 120 frames on the series s you most likely see that resolution dip down to about 1080p but kind of hover around 1440p which is still a great resolution to play at. 1080p nowadays might be a little bit low, but that's that compromise that you have. Either you can have more frames and lower resolution or less frames and higher resolution. That's both works for the Series X and S consoles. So when it comes to the performance on the Xbox Series X, the flagship console for Halo Infinite, they say that they can play the game at 4K 60 FPS rather well. Though if you want to play at 120 frames on the Series X, you'll see that resolution dip to right around 1080p, 1440p, somewhere around there. There. They also showcase that if you wanted to play Halo Infinite at 120 frames, oftentimes the Xbox Series X kind of struggled a lot to maintain that frame rate. It can definitely hit it, but a lot of times you'll see it dip below to like the low hundreds to maybe even the high 90s. The Series S on the other hand can be a little tricky where play on the Series S, you'll see that 60 frames per second will be right around 1080p, which is all right, but I would prefer that resolution to be a little bit higher, but you can go up to 120 frames on the Series S, though you hit some really serious resolution issues within the game. They showcase it right here where it can go as low as 540p, and 120 frames on the Series S. Again, these are just traditional trade-offs that you have to make with any kind of platform or any kind of hardware whatsoever. The fact that you even can do 120 frames on the Series S, in my opinion, is actually a bit of a miracle. But glad to see that Microsoft and 343 were able to balance it out. We can get 60 frames at 4K resolution. I think that's the gold standard for what the Xbox Series X is trying to pull off. Now, here comes the compromises though. We have the Xbox One family of consoles. This is where a lot of people are having like issues and a lot of concerns about Halo Infinite's performance and we're actually concerned if the Xbox One family of consoles were holding back the new gen and PC versions. In playing on the Xbox One X, the highest performance version of the Xbox One family of consoles, they said it's actually rather comparable like resolution wise to the Xbox Series X at 60 frames per second but though all the Xbox One consoles are locked at 30 frames. This is kind of one of those things like, yeah, guys, you're playing on a last gen hardware that was released essentially back in 2013 that you need to make sure that the game runs well on. So those kind of compromises are going to happen when 
when you're playing on that old of hardware. They also showed that the Xbox One S at 30 frames can dip down to 540p, which is pretty rough on the resolution. A big question I'm sure you guys will ask is how's Xbox Series X versus PC? And honestly, it's rather comparable. The, the differences between the platforms visually is very minimal and kind of stuff that you have to really dig in to really see the differences between the two, which is really great for the console players and maybe some PC players might be a little disappointed in that. But we'll get into that a little bit later about the performance of the Halo Infinite's tech preview on PC. And here's a four-way shot showcasing the graphical differences between the platforms. And honestly, like macro, big scale, looking at the whole thing, it's rather negligible on the visual differences besides obviously the Xbox One consoles running at 30 frames per second. They do mention some minor detail kind of stuff like with the Xbox Series S here on the left, you can see the reflections in the ground right here and some more shell casings were on the one family of consoles. You don't have that reflection happening, you have less objects on the ground, but honestly like large scale kind of looking at everything, it's rather comparable like there's really not much of a downgrade besides obviously the lower frame rate and lower resolution on the xbox one family of consoles that doesn't look like you're playing on like minecraft version of halo if you know what i mean this next one here is a side-by-side -side comparison again of xbox versus pc and you actually can see a little bit of difference mainly in the distant objects on this clip right here we can see the switching back and forth between Xbox and consoles. Take a note of the trees in the background right there, where you can see the trees on the back. With the Xbox, they're a little bit more blobby, but the trees when the PC version comes around are much more clear and defined. So this is kind of like those minor differences you come across while playing on Xbox versus PC. Now let's get into the what I was talking about at the top of this video is that how PC seems to be highly underutilized right now and not very well optimized for the gameplay of Halo Infinite. Here's a clip showcasing the frame rate. As you can see, like in the upper left, you have the frame counter and you have the nice frame bar kind of showcasing the dips and the frames and stuff like that. And with this PC, which they have a beefy PC playing on a 3090 graphics card and like a top line CPU as well. And this game is actually struggling to hold 60 frames, which is very surprising for allowing people to have such high fidelity within your games usually you try to get to like that possibility of having really high frames and stuff like that and better resolutions and stuff like that but you can see in this like screenshot right here this freeze frame you can see most of the cpu usage is very underutilized right now they say have their gpu which is a 3090 like i mentioned which is a top line graphics card at the moment it's at 76 percent usage right now and i'm sure they're trying to push this thing as much as they possibly can and it's kind of just hovering right around 60 frames, a lot of times dipping below 60 frames as well. Which obviously if you're playing on PC, you want to try to push your system more and get more out of your games than you usually can do compared to consoles, which have much more limited, refined experiences where PC can be a little bit more modular to what you would like to have for your gameplay experience. They mentioned in their video, if you turn off VSync and turn off the frame limiter, it actually, what it does, it actually really smooths out the gameplay where you can play at a constant 60 frames per second on PC. So it sounds like there's some kind of awkward workarounds where you can make it work. I'm I'm just hoping to play the game at like 1440p 60 frames per second playing on my 1080 ti so there is still a lot of room for optimization to be done when it comes to halo infinite which does mean that they still have a lot of work to be done and optimization passes are usually the last thing that gets done within the game when it comes to development because they want to make sure that whatever in the game is finally in the game so they can optimize everything as possible without having to worry about things changing on the way in this current build of Halo Infinite is pre-beta. So there is a lot of work to be done when it comes to the optimization of this game. Digital Foundry also mentioned about their biggest concern about Halo Infinite is actually the campaign side of things because with multiplayer, you have stagnant lighting, you can have baked in lighting, like the time of day doesn't change and stuff like that. There's not much in the way of dynamic shadows or any kind of particle effects for the most part. When you're playing on campaign, it's gonna be very different. We have time of day changes as well. So it's dynamic lighting, dynamic shadows, which are hugely intensive on the hardware. And you also have a ton more of AI being placed on the map as well. So I'd say that 343 is not completely out of the woods yet when it comes to performance in Halo Infinite. We still need a chance to see how the game actually plays on the campaign side of things, which is probably gonna be the more graphically intensive stuff because you have larger environments, dynamic lighting and shadows. As a PC player, I really hope they work on that optimization. We'll just have to wait and see until we get a chance to play it. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a place to all my Halo news and informational videos that we've been uploading nearly daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.